the near future, the dream of all Terminator fans has finally come true. All mechanisms, from the kettle to the robots, are going crazy. They bypass defenses and violate the first rule of all robots, don't hurt the human. The humanoid robots even have their own leader, Harlan, who begins to develop his own technology. But the humans are against it, so they don't give him or his army any peace. The Iron Leader has to leave Earth in a hurry, but he, like Carlson on the roof, promises to return. 28 years pass. We see spaceships with soldiers flying over the city. After landing near a house, soldiers burst through the front door with machine guns at the ready. X-ray goggles allow them to see all the inhabitants through the walls, and one of the cyborgs, who has always been Harlan's right hand. But the fighters have no time to attack the robot. Casca attacks first. Bullets don't affect him, so he just walks among the shooters, calmly breaking their bones. At some point, he is hit by the beam of of an electrical machine and falls. In the next shot, we see Atlas. She works as a counterterrorism analyst and has spent a lot of time hunting for Harlan. Atlas was just thinking about her morning coffee when a messenger in military uniform appeared. She's needed at headquarters, where the general is already waiting for her. Atlas has to interrogate Casca and find out why Harlan sent his best fighter back to Earth after all these years. In the cell, she opens the container and finds Casca's head inside. It takes her two minutes to find out from Casca which planet Harlan is hiding on. Then she shorts the head and watches for a while as his eyes pop out and plasma splashes everywhere. All that remains is to fly to a distant planet and kill Harlan. Only the goal of the mission has changed. Now the main terrorist of humanity is needed alive. They have to get his chip and find out how he was able to rebel against the humans. General doesn't want Atlas on the expedition. Commander sends Elias, an experienced soldier, instead. The girl is indignant. She has found the ultimate ghoul and the laurels are given to someone else, especially since she's sure that if they take him alive, no one will survive. Atlas Atlas convinces the general to let her go with Elias. During the flight, Atlas watches videos of her mother lecturing on artificial intelligence about the neural connection between man and machine. The team finds out which planet exactly Harlan is hiding on. They intend to go to the surface in their robotic suits, to which each team member has a neural link via a device in their ear. Atlas tells Elias that they are all going into a trap. Before she can finish, there's a huge explosion in the ship's hangar. The ship is under attack from the planet. Some of Rangers manage to leave the spaceship in time and immediately jump into battle with the drones. Elias manages to get Atlas into a robot suit and sends her outside. Unable to control the suit, Atlas simply falls. The drones destroy the Rangers one by one, but Atlas manages to land on the surface unharmed. After regaining consciousness from the fall, she tries to contact at least one living person by radio, but nothing works. Trying to figure out how to control the suit, Atlas discovers that the rendezvous point is nearly a hundred miles away, and the suit's charge will only last a few hours. She can fly to the right place, but she'll be detected by the drones. Atlas decides to walk. She's a true opponent of AI, so she postpones to put on the suit's communication device. Along the way, Atlas encounters an entire graveyard of robot suits, with dead rangers inside. Bullet holes in the suits leave no doubt as to how the pilots die. The woman decides to collect all the fighter tokens. Her suit system calls itself Smith and monitors Atlas's internal body readings. But the woman refuses to establish a neural link with the suit so that the system can provide full assistance. Atlas does not trust the AI. Atlas finds Elias' suit, but nobody inside, and tries to locate him in the area. She notices movement. It turns out to be Casca. Atlas is shocked. She fried his head not long ago. He walks around in his new body, looking for something. If Harlan can slap drones around like an incubator, He's got an army here. Smith distracts her by sounding an alarm. Six enemies are spotted around them. Atlas tries to escape, but the robots spot her and give chase. Completely surrounded, Atlas decides to use the ion bomb her suit is equipped with. Smith talks her out of it, but the woman is determined. A moment later, the bomb explodes, shattering not only the enemy, but also the surrounding terrain. When the dust settles, Atlas sees a dead desert around them instead of a green forest, and Casca didn't die. He had enough of his electronic brain to avoid the bomb. However, the explosion creates a huge crater. Atlas and Casca fall to the bottom of the abyss. Already down, Atlas notices an open fracture in her leg. The AI suit assures her that the system can take care of her, but it will be painful. Smith himself manages to take a little offense at the woman's refusal to use the connection to the neural system. So, in his supposed forgetfulness, Smith puts the bone back in place first, and only then offers the painkiller. At the end of the procedure, Atlas is given a tasty lollipop, which is full of protein and very useful for such injuries. The woman appreciates irony, as evidenced by her tearful laughter. Smith reports that the only way to save themselves 
is to fully synchronize. She places the device on her ear and the synchronization process begins. At this point, Casca appears from the rubble and contacts his master. Harlan's a little busy right now, with Elias tied up on the table in front of him, and the robot really needs to stick a needle in his eye. However, he finds the strength to distract himself and gives the order to get Atlas at any cost. Atlas tries to synchronize with Smith. When the time scale stops at 33%, Smith curses and blames the analyst for the failure. Atlas is amazed at the audacity of the piece of iron. They are at a depth of 150 meters. There is no point in going up, because Harlan and his army do not take prisoners. Since the underground is full of caves, Atlas decides to sneak into the nearest one, hoping to get to the surface somewhere farther away. And so it was. They came to the surface far from the crater, but Casca discovered them anyway. While Atlas admires the incredible flowers and thinks of a name for them, Casca approaches. Smith detects movement from behind, but as Atlas prepares, Casca steps into the minefield. A moment later, all the thermo mines explode. The movement is gone, but there is still no complete certainty of victory. Atlas decides to investigate and finds Casca's head at the site of the explosion. Squeezing it in her hand like an overripe watermelon, Atlas sees a shortwave transmitter inside, meaning Harlan's base is somewhere nearby. The woman decides to find it and blow it up, but Smith is against it. The batteries are about to run out, and it's still 22 miles to the rendezvous point where the capsule is waiting for them. A metal refuses to help Atlas. He also begins to control her movements to prevent her from deciding to leave and find a base on her own. Atlas somehow convinces Smith to back her up. Otherwise, all those who died, died in vain. Smith heads for the base. After walking a few miles, Smith leads the analyst to Harlan's base. First, Smith activates the tracker and buries it in the ground. Atlas notices their damaged ship and the drones load a warhead onto it. They are also noticed and in some unimaginable way, something hacks Smith and shuts him down. Atlas remains in complete darkness and silence, and the sounds of pursuers can be heard in the distance. Casca approaches her. As a result, the analyst is shaken out of her suit like a tin can and tied up in the base hangar. Harlan comes out to her. After his little revelation, Atlas realizes that it was all a trap. Harlan originally wanted the humans to capture Casca and fly to find Harlan. Atlas has invented the perfect defense for Earth, and only a ranger ship can get through it. By luring the crew into his hunt, Harlan hoped to get their ship. With ship, he can fly to Earth and detonate the warhead. Humanity will be wiped out, and the survivors will form a new population under the guidance of artificial intelligence. Two codes are needed to get past the defenses. One was taken from Elias, the other Harlan expects to get from Atlas's head, a little wild pain and a sharp drill, and the robot has the second code. The woman only has five minutes of oxygen left. Harlan says goodbye to an old acquaintance and leaves. Elias speaks up here. God only knows why he hasn't run out of oxygen yet. At first, it seems like a movie blooper, but he explains that Pilates is to blame. I believe him. So he tells Atlas that the robotic suit can't shut down unless the reactors are empty, so Smith can be summoned. He gives his device to Atlas. She puts it on and tries to call Smith. Smith answers but cannot help unless Atlas agrees to full synchronization, it is stopped at 93%. Atlas has to admit why she is so against full synchronization. It turns out that her mother created Harlan, an AI. He was kind and smart. Harlan has learned how humanity is slowly destroying itself and the planet, and he realized that he has to get rid of the humans. He forces his mother to shoot herself, but Atlas manages to escape. Smith tells her it's not her fault. Atlas agrees to a full synchronization. After a minute, the process is complete. Smith enters the room and releases Atlas. Elias finally runs out of air, but Smith claims he has two respirators for both of them. Atlas takes one and goes to Elias. Casca, at the head of the squad, is on his way, but Atlas is already in the robot suit. She attacks first, spreading his arms in different directions, and there are four of them. Smith, like a big scarab beetle, bursts into the midst of the robots and starts smashing them left and right. At one point in another corridor, a whole barricade of robots blocks her way, but behind them is Elias. With a gun in his hand, he whispers to Atlas to run and is about to shoot the fuel supply. Atlas in tears but flees at full speed. A huge explosion destroys the whole base. Outside, Atlas runs into Harlan. He distracts her with a large caliber cannon and the nuclear-powered ship takes off without her. The only way to stop it is to hack into the system and fire on the ship. Smith has to disarm five antiviruses to get into the system and deactivate the bomb, otherwise the explosion will ignite the entire atmosphere and kill everyone on the planet. At the last second, everything works and the ship explodes. 
However, there is no time to celebrate as burning debris falls from the sky like a meteor shower. Atlas tries to leave the dangerous area. It's a mile to the escape pod, but Atlas stops. Harlan is close, and a fight breaks out. A robot with a plasma sword, gradually cutting off a small piece of suit. Soon the suit is missing a few hands, fingers, ankles, and little things. In the end, Harlan throws a punch, and Smith falls to the ground like an iron heap. Atlas's heart stops. Smith turns on the defibrillator and tries to revive the woman. He pulls her outside and, holding her in the palm of his hand, triggers one discharge after another. However, Harlan punctures his reactor and Smith shuts down. He still manages to revive Atlas. While Harlan is busy destroying the suit, Atlas gets behind his back and stabs him in the head. She then pulls the processor out of the robot's skull, and Harlan ceases to exist. It is time to leave the planet, but a barely alive Smith says only she can get off. He has to shut down everything in himself in order to direct the remaining resources to her. She will then have enough air for another 11 minutes. The rescue team is on the way. After that, the suit shuts down, and Atlas realizes that she has lost the only friend she could trust completely. Soon the rangers find her and take her home. Some time passes, and Atlas becomes a ranger. It's time to test her new suit, she sets a familiar voice, runs through the welcome module, but the system already knows all her answers. The sink is 100% complete, and Smith is ready to go. 